Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Tuesday the 2nd of January 2013 and I'm here with the original dirtbag Logan Runnan and we're having a conversation about catfish glass and his claims that there's something strange going on with the moon. Here is a video that Logan Runnan has just uploaded uh, called This Is It Folks, Catfish Glass Explains How We're All Gonna Die and we're looking at a diagram that Catfish Glass has posted and we're going to discuss this diagram and uh, see what's going on in this diagram and see if we can't try and make sense of what Catfish Glass is trying to explain and his understanding of field rotation and what is going on with the moon. So let's go to the diagram that uh, Catfish Glass has posted. This is a better view of it. Now just to explain, this diagram was originally created by D5UNCR on YouTube. And this diagram was created to explain to Catfish Glass how field rotation works and why the moon appears to tilt as it crosses the sky. Now Catfish Glass has posted this diagram several times <clears throat> and uh, made a number of comments about it um, because he keeps on using an illustration of for example using a tennis ball and a lamp to represent the sun uh, to explain what's going on with the moon. Now in this diagram we see uh, CFG Nim Nimrod represents uh, catfish glass standing on, uh, on the earth that's why it says CFG catfish glass Nimrod standing on the earth looking at the moon and as he's standing here looking at the moon and the sun is shining on the moon it's at first quarter which means it looks like half a moon this is what we see out on the right hand side this is what catfish glass would see but as the earth rotates on its axis and the, the, the moon crosses the sky when catfish glass gets down to this point as the earth is rotated 90 degrees then this is what he sees now it seems a little bit confusing because we actually have to tilt our head to sort of understand what catfish glass is seeing in this box but if you look at his view here you see that he's actually looking this way now okay if you imagine that his feet are on the ground this way and he's looking at the moon this way then if we stood him up upright and looked at what we what he is seeing then this is what he would see. The moon would look like this, whereas before it looked like this. Now there's only one problem with this diagram, and it's a simple mistake, and that is, of course, that the imagery for the Earth is actually incorrect, because as we look at this and look at how the Earth is rotating, it looks like the Earth is actually rotating through the equator. We should be seeing the North Pole here, not the equator, of course, because its axis of rotation is here. That's the only thing that's wrong with this diagram, but as far as explaining how field rotation works, the diagram is actually correct. All it needs is that the imagery for the Earth should show the, the North Pole or the South Pole here to show the rotation of the Earth. Okay, so I've got Logan. Logan's going to come in here. What do you think of this, Logan? Do you follow this diagram? I'll tell you, it's, re it's really hard for me to follow it, even uh, watching you ex explain it. From uh, our perspective, you know, here on the ground, you know, the the moon looks to me like, you know, it's the same. It's all, you know, it's always, you know, lit on the the same side as it, you know, moves through. I haven't noticed anything different. That, but this guy is so persistent about this. Uh, I just we had to to take a closer look at it, you know. But I, I understand what you're saying. Other than the perspective of where this, the sun is at, are we supposed to be looking from the top down of the earth here? Well, this imagine him at the equator, okay, and that the earth has actually turned 90 degrees. So that would be um, that six hours of rotation, six fours of 24. So um, one quarter of ro rotation would be six hours. So six hours later, you know, if he, if he starts off here, then six hours later he's, he's going to be down here. So he's actually going to be at this point here. So his viewing point 
of the moon is is going to be um, 90 degrees to what it what it was at when he was up here, which is exactly what we see here. Now remember, if if he's got his camera and he's taking a snapshot, um, you know when you view the snapshot, you're not going to view it that way. You're going to view it as we see it here, as if our feet are flat on the ground. It's sort of it's difficult to explain, but of course, you know, if we're looking at our photos um, this way, then it's going to show an apparent rotation of the moon. I'll just go back to the, the video that, that I did uh, way back in uh, August of 2012, trying to explain field rotation to uh, catfish. He seems to be confused between two things. He's confused between field rotation and the phases of the moon that it goes through every approximately 28 days, it's about 29 and a half days, it goes from new moon through first quarter to full moon to last quarter and then back to new moon. And some of the comments that he's been making seems to indicate that he believes that the moon is, um, as he as he has said here, uh, with the quote, the moon is waxing and waning every 12 hours. Well, it's not waxing and waning because that's actually impossible. What he's suggesting is that it's going through a full month's phases of, of the moon every 12 hours. Or yeah, because that means the percentage of, mm. of uh, that's blackened out or whatever on one side or to the other. I know what you're talking about. Right. So and it takes a long time to do it. 30 days, right? That's correct. And it can't possibly happen in, in 12 hours or, or twice a day. It's impossible. Um, but what he's seeing, and you know, he challenged me, and, and I went out with my camera and filmed the moon over over seven hours last year, and uh, this is what we saw, and this is exactly what I, I expected that we would see. We, we started off with the moon looking like this, and you can see the angle of this shadow. The shadow is called the terminator, and we can see that the angle here. And I went out every half an hour, and... Um, and film the, the moon and this is what we saw I'll just play this video here so this was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon 4.30 5 o'clock 5.30 you can see it's vertical there 6 o'clock we can see it's tilting the other way now now this, yep. is, this is due to field rotation and this is simply due to the um, the, the moon travelling across our sky or apparently travelling across our sky as the okay, earth, so yeah, as the let me ask you this: underneath. Is this this is what he's seeing, and he's interpreting this as the Earth is flipping over? Is that is that what the whole deal is? He seems to be saying that the moon is flipping over, but he I'm getting confused um, messages from him because, as I pointed out before, on on one hand he's saying that the moon is waxing and waning. Uh, every 12 hours, twice a day, he says, well, clearly it isn't, and it's impossible, and I've actually challenged him to take photographs or video of the moon to show it waxing and waning every 12 hours, and of course he can't, and he won't. Um, but he well, two of those comments that I had, uh, he had said that it wasn't, seeing the moon move was uh, only an indication that the Earth was actually the one that was doing the flipping around, and you know that would be connected to this the weather and things like that mm. there's another um, diagram which is actually quite helpful in explaining field rotation this is on a, a, an astronomy site um, there are two types of telescopes for uh, following um, objects in the in the night sky there are a telescopes that are equatorial which will actually compensate for field rotation and there are telescopes on a what's called an uh, alt azimuth mount, which does not compensate for field rotation. And these diagrams here actually demonstrate what's actually going on. And we can see the constellation Cassiopeia here um, rotating through the, the sky. And um, we c further down here, there's actually a zoomed up view. And we can see that rotating through through the sky. That's going to play. Here we go. And this is the same thing that, that we see with the moon. It's, it's simply because of the, the Earth is rotating underneath the, the sky. And our 
perceived angle of, of the object it appears to be rotating through the sky and this is simply field rotation nothing more it's not because the the moon has flipped on its axis or the earth has flipped on its axis it's simply the earth turning underneath the sky that we're looking at well also if uh, the earth axis changes were that dramatic I think we would notice something outside. <laughs> I mean, we would be in serious dire straits, don't you think? Well, we certainly would, yes. Well, there, I think there's our proof right there that the oceans aren't, you know, sloshing over the cities and all that. <laughs> you know, every, every 12 hours, I think, is what you said, right? Yeah. There's a, another video that, that I did uh, much earlier, this is before catfish glass came onto the scene, where I used some video of a Concorde aircraft and, and some other aircraft doing a flyby across the sky. Now they were flying in a straight line and it was a very good example of, of um, how we see field rotation. I'll just play this bit of the video and we'll, we'll have a quick talk about that. So this we see video, this, um, so you don't have to watch it as a separate link. Let's have a look at this video of this Concorde aircraft flying across the sky from east to west as if we are looking north. This is the sort of view that we would have from the southern hemisphere if we were comparing it to the moon. Let's take another look and we'll take some photos this time as the aircraft fly over. Pointing north east. pointing north and pointing northwest. Now let's take a look at our photos. We can see now that the angle that the aircraft are pointing in our photographs are quite different in each photo. And in exactly the same way we will see that the moon appears to change its angle as it travels across the sky. Okay, so there's an example with the aircraft. Now, Catfish Glass seems to have a problem because he's, he's saying that you can't use an aircraft as an example of field rotation because he calls it linear motion and seems to think that that makes it different somehow to, to the moon crossing the sky. Or well, whether it's an object such as an aircraft crossing the sky or an object such as the moon apparently crossing the sky due, uh, due to the Earth's rotation underneath it, the, the same applies, it's going to appear to rotate through the sky as, as we turn and follow it and take pictures of it, it's exactly the same thing. Fabulous. So you can follow that can't you Logan? Absolutely. So the airplane, the airplane thing really brings it out, you know, I mean because that happens within seconds of what it takes all night for the moon to do. That's right. You know, it show, and it shows you right there. If nothing else it changes that, you know, at least that, that angle is going to change. But the, the, the question to me was like, you know, I want to you know, make it really clear here that this, this is what his point is, is that if we see that the tilt from the extreme early evening to the extreme early morning his interpretation of that was is that either us or the moon was way out of whack on its axis and that we were all in very deep trouble of this and uh, before uh, springtime was to roll around it uh, you know we'd all be pushing up daisies that's right. He's, he's predicting that millions of people are going to die and as the cameraman is a murderer because I'm trying to cover this up. <laughs> well, because they, you're, you're uh, uh, questioning him about it. Yeah. <laughs> you're a murderer. Yeah. I mean, he said that a bunch. I think like uh, six, seven times in there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we, it's good that we, we've absolutely got to tear, tear the top off of these and get get down to the to the bottom of it you know especially 
a fanatical like this, you know. Hmm. But I do want to do one with you about the uh, the fireball uptick thing. I've got some new angles that I wanted to discuss with you about that, and especially that graph. Sure. Yep, okay, well, let's do that. Let's wrap this one up now so we don't make it too long, and uh, we can look at doing the fireball one as a follow-up. How's that? Well, always a pleasure, Daza, and shout-out to all the dirt bags, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, and as always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.